Hello everybody. I got my initial Blender page here. You can open new files to work on. It gives you different options here. I'm just going to continue working on the project from the last video, this little house project. But before getting started, I want to share where I downloaded this software from. It's free to download. You just go to their website you can, or you can go to Google type in Blender 2.8 their web page comes up it's blender.org and you you get one here where you can download so I click on that that's the latest version 2.82 if you can click on that it'll give you the instructions to download there's also some descriptions here, so you can use this for animation, modeling, visual effects, game developing, and 3D printing. It's free and open source, so you can use it, share it, change it, or sell your work. And, or you can join the community over here. Now going back to my project. Okay, so I have my simple house model here and I want to start adding stuff to it, but first I want to find a good point of reference. So right now my point of reference is the 3D cursor, which is right at the center of the house. But when you start adding stuff, it's hard to take measurements or add things to it when you're referencing the center. So it's better if I use one of the corners. I'm going to use the corner down here on the left and at the back. In order to do that, I go over here to my tools and I select the cursor tool. But before moving it to the corner, I want to show something. So I can move the cursor now in different places. One of the things this cursor determines is where you can add objects. So if I do shift A, get options to add different objects. And as you can see, wherever I move my cursor, that's where the object ap appears when I add it. Um, okay, I don't need those objects anymore. So I'm just going to do control Z to undo these functions. Speaking of the undo function, we can apply that to the cursor. If we make a mistake and we want to bring the cursor back to the origin, there's a menu for that. You can bring it up by pressing Shift S. All the menu options come up. We want to select cursor to world origin, or you can also press one, the shortcut key. And there it is, back at the center. But what I really wanted to do was move it back to this corner. Uh, this annotate tool that I used to mark it, I'm going to discuss it in the next video. It's helpful for hand drawing ideas or annotating things. Anyway, going back to my 3D cursor. First, I need to select my vertex in that corner. So I go to my select tool and I also select vertex select and I go select it. Now I bring up my cursor menu with shift S and I select cursor to active or number three if you're using a shortcut. Now I still have one more step to make this corner the object origin. What the object origin does is that it controls the pivot point, which I'm going to show now. But first I need to switch to object mode. This time I'm going to use the shortcut key tab, one more hot key in our arsenal. And it works the same way in reverse. It switches from object to edit mode. 
Now I select my object and press the hotkey R for rotate. As you can see here, the pivot point is right at the center, which is the origin. And now I'm going to change it to my bottom left corner in the back. In order to do that, I go to Object, Set Origin, and I select Origin to 3D Cursor. I hit R again for Rotate. And you can see that now we have a new origin or a new pivot point. This new origin also has an effect on the other functions. For example, one we used in the last video, scale. I hit S and you can see that it scales in reference to the new origin. And if I hit X, you can see it scales differently along the x-axis. Now I want to return this cursor to the world origin along with my object. So that's gonna require two steps. First I open my cursor menu, shift S, and I do like before, cursor to world origin. Once it's there, I open my menu again Shift this, and with my object selected, I do selection to cursor. And there it is. This corner is now aligned with my cursor and the world origin, and it's also the object origin. I have a summary of our progress thus far. These are the tools, functions, menus that we cover for this video. Pretty much the 3D cursor and the menu, changing the origin, rotating, using tab to change from edit to object mode. And I also highlighted the functions from the previous video that we used for this video. So I'm keeping track of the progress that we make on each video and how the different tools apply to it. And as you can see here in two videos, we've covered and used 19 functions. I believe this will help us in the future. Thank you for watching.